All right, lads and lasses, I went down a freaking rabbit hole. Today we're going to talk about DX feed integration. Get your helmets on because this is going to be a pain in the butt. First things first, I made a configuration file, tt.config. The Git project now has a tt.config class that loads the file, and a sample is included. The comments in the sample config file explain what each parameter does, although I think you'll be able to figure out what they do on your own. So here's the big update. I wrote a Python module to use dxfeed because I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out how to make the native dxfeed Python library work with the tasty trade authentication key. This one's a biggie, and if you're not familiar with asynchronous Python and threading, you might get a little left behind in this video, but I'll try to explain as much as I can without turning this video into a Python 301 course. If you have any questions, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter, or just join us on Discord and we'll discuss things. For our dxfeed module to work, we'll need to install AIO Comet D with a simple pip command. We'll import it, two of its classes, connection type and client, as well as the async IO module. We'll also need to import the DX auth extension module that I'll help write in a bit. When you break it down, this module is very basic, but it does have some quirks that we need to account for because we have to use the Comet D protocol to subscribe and unsubscribe from channels. First, we'll need to define the different services we can subscribe to. For the start of this journey, we'll only worry about the data and subscribe services. Since I'm creating a bunch of enumerators, I'll also declare the DX action and DX event classes, which will serve as the fulfillment of the second most important rule in software development, never use magic strings. So like I said, the DX feed class is really basic. There are connect and disconnect methods, two different kinds of subscribe methods, an unsubscribe method, and a janky looking listen method. Disconnect is the simplest of methods that just sets our active state to false and disconnects our DX feed stream. Connect is the exact opposite. It opens the DX feed stream, connects us, does some basic authentication, then subscribes us to the data feed, which we need in order to do anything, and then sends a reset command as per the DX feed documentation. All of that is straightforward except for two lines of code, the DX auth extension, which I'll discuss in a moment, and this little beauty of a line. I pounded my head into a wall for about two hours wondering why every time I connected to DX feed exactly as they had written out in their documentation, I was getting a 404 HTML page. Well, let me tell you a story about why it's super useful to go through a project's bug tracker and see if anyone else has run into this issue. It turns out that while AIO Comet D does support setting a connection type in the client constructor, it doesn't use this connection type if the schema doesn't match what it thinks it should. DXFeed sends us a URI that starts with HTTPS. AIO Comet D, even if you explicitly tell it to use a WebSocket connection, as we are here, will fall back to HTTP long polling if it doesn't see the WSS schema and instead sees the HTTPS schema. That's where this miracle of a line of code comes in. By overriding the module's default connection type, we trick the module into falling back to using a WebSocket. Let me tell you, that was not fun to figure out. While I do enjoy the dopamine hit from figuring out a particularly difficult problem, stuff like this is just an unjoyous festival where you only really celebrate the fact that it's over. Now, the only little teensy thing we have to do is write our own authentication extension for AIO Comet D. First, we need to dig through the documentation and find out that DXFeed is expecting a specific set of data in the channel dictionary of handshake requests. That's where this comes in. This entire module's purpose is basically to just inject this one line of code into the handshake messages. That's it. That is the only thing it does. So why then do we overload not just the outgoing method, but also the incoming and authenticate methods? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you fail to overload these methods, you'll get a delightfully unhelpful error message that will point you in every direction but the right one. Even better, if you write this code in the standard way and pass the methods off to the parent version, like you would probably do in 99% of the cases, you'll get the same exact error. No, you need to overload these methods and you need to prevent these methods from defaulting to the parent method. Once you do that, you're done. You've successfully written an authentication extension for AIO Comet D and DX feed. That took me way longer than I'm willing to admit to figure out. So as it's written, this code should speak for itself. We attach a given list of symbols to a specific DX feed event. The body for non-time series subscribe events just looks like we're throwing an array of strings at individual events. 
Time series events are a little bit different, and we have to break out individual symbols into different subscriber quests. The unsubscribe method is super simple. It literally just unsubscribes the given list of symbols from the given list of events. Now, the semi-confusing one, the listen method. I've wrapped everything in a try accept block. I normally tend to stay away from try accept because traditional OOP concepts in Python just really don't feel like they mix very well. But in this case, we need it because we just need to make sure the program doesn't freak out. Basically, we want this one exception, asyncio.timeout error, to kick us out of the listen method without nuking the entire program. Now, inside the try block, we're using asyncio.timeout to force our asynchronous message queue to stop running. I'm not going to go into detail here, but essentially what's happening is that the async for loop is, weirdly enough, blocking. So if we don't get a message from DXFeed, it'll just hang here and we'd never be able to exit the program without sending a kill command via the terminal. We set the timeout to such a low value because if there's nothing there, we're actually going to do something in the main part of the program. That's really all listen does. It just checks to see if there's any messages waiting for us in the queue, and if there isn't, it just exits, which it'll get cold again soon enough. So look, I hate the fact that it's written like this, but I just don't have the time to sit down and figure out how to integrate asynchronous AIO comma D library with the non-asynchronous everything else, while still having everything run concurrently with AIO comma D, sharing data across three separate services, and having data streamed in from what is now essentially three different data streams, the REST API, the WebSockets API, and the DXFeed API. To make a long story short, I know it's not great. I'm doing this in my spare time, and I'm putting these videos together. And sometimes you just get what you pay for, all right? If you can figure out a better way to pull this project together while still keeping it as entry-level accessible as possible, by all means, the GitHub repo is open to the public. The basic parts of our test script remain unchanged. The big change is how we introduce the DX feed module and have it run concurrently while they're also running several different things. In short, we can't, so I just chucked it into its own thread. We take the DX feed module and we literally just yeet it into its own child process. It's a bit of a hacky way of doing it, but the benefit here is that the way Python treats memory across processes, we really don't have to worry about much except for the occasional race condition. You'll also notice that we're able to send new commands to DXFeed while simultaneously keeping the DXFeed connection alive. In a nutshell, it works, and I'm not about to mess with it anytime soon. There's also one other thing I'd like to point out. What I'm doing here with subscribe time series. You'll notice I not only have an equity symbol here, I have this funky equals 1D surrounded by curly braces next to it. If you dig through the DXFeed documentation, you'll notice there's not a single reference to this at all. So how did I figure this out? That's where DXFeed's REST API demo came in incredibly handy. By paying attention to the way some data was formatted in their JavaScript library, I was able to almost reverse engineer how to request time series data from them. I say almost because it doesn't work the exact same way the REST API does. Also, you notice the from time and to time parameters aren't in year, month, day format like the DXFeed documentation suggests, but instead are in microseconds. That's another quirk I had to do some reverse engineering on. Thank God I have Wireshark and an active TastyTrade account, or I'd have never figured that out. Basically, this entire video has been a buildup to me saying this. All developer documentation sucks. Oh, and uh, before I close this video out, I added support for grabbing the market metrics data from the TastyTrade API. That one is silly because unlike the rest of the API, the market metrics endpoint expects parameters in a query string, whereas everything else expects parameters as part of a JSON string in the body of the request. I don't understand that either. But on the bright side, it's there and it lets us very easily grab the IVR of most underlying, so that's a win. And that's all I've got for you this video. I'm not sure where the next video will take us or if there will even be a next video, so you'll have to leave a comment, some suggestions, hit me up on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, I'm at one lot Jason. shoot me a message, join us on Discord, the link's in the description below. Let me know what you want to see, or even if you want to see this continue, because I'd be more than happy to continue to let people help learn how to use this sort of stuff. Thanks for dropping by, and we'll see you next time. Peace!